A new telescope launched by the European Space Agency in July has now released the first photos in its mission to map the night sky. The Euclid Space Telescope is helping scientists understand our universe, both the parts we can see and those we can't. Now, the first photo shows us, there's Darius Madavi, he's going to tell us about it. The first photo shows us the Perseus constellation, and it's not just a beautiful image. Each of the glowing clusters is its own galaxy. We'll show those images when we can. So, there they are. Darius, tell us about this Euclid Space Telescope. Why is it so important? Now, Euclid is in position just now in uh, around 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth, and it's going to observe literally billions of galaxies, not an exaggeration, over the next six years, with the goal of creating a 3D map of a full one-third of the night sky, so much more than we've ever mapped before. Now, these galaxies stretch as much as 10 billion light years away, and the photos that were released today, or just yesterday, sorry, are actually just test images, but they're already incredible. So let's take a look. Uh, if you look at this first image, this is of Spiral Galaxy with a very catchy name, IC342. It's also known as the Hidden Galaxy because it actually lies behind one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way. So all that dust, uh, all the dust, that gas, and all those pesky stars make it very difficult to observe, but it's not much of a problem for Euclid. Uh, now this next picture is the mess of lights uh, the globu uh, globular cluster, sorry, NGC 6397. You can see the scientists are very creative. Uh, <laughs> globular clusters are bunches of hundreds of thousands of stars held together by gravity, and this one is just 7,800 light years away, so incredibly mm. close on space time uh, <laughs> distance scales. This was taken in just one hour, which is a real achievement because in the past, we've had to take many, many different photos and sort of stitch them all together because mm. the brightest stars will sort of uh, uh, flood out the, the uh, dimmer ones. Now here we have the Horsehead Nebula. You might think it is, should be the background for your desktop, but it is actually space and it is absolutely spectacular. So this is where stars are born. It's a stellar nursery. This is the closest one to Earth. And if you look closely through the dust and gas at the bottom of that photo, you can see the galaxies that lie behind it, which is just a real testament to Euclid itself. And last up is the photo that Dan showed us off the top. Taken in just five hours of observation, you can see hundreds of thousands of galaxies in this photo. And to speak more about it, I'm gonna pass this off to Douglas Scott, a professor of physics and astronomy at UBC, who is directly involved in the Euclid mission. One of those Euclid images that came out today, which is a cluster of galaxies, there's many galaxies in this cluster in the sort of foreground. And the background contains maybe 100,000 galaxies. We've never taken a picture from a space satellite with you know high resolution and so on with 100,000 galaxies in one picture. These images are incredible, Darius. We know you love the James Webb Space Telescope. What sets Euclid apart from your old favorite? Yes, now I love them both equally. It's like asking me to pick my favorite child, so I love them both. <laughs> but as Scott told me, the big difference comes down to their scope. People are used to pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope or the James Webb Space Telescope, and those are amazing. Uh, but they take very small pictures of the sky. Uh, and Euclid's, uh, you know, a one, a single image from Euclid is, is bigger than the full moon. So it complements these other space telescopes. You can use Euclid to find stuff, which is interesting or weird, and then use James Webb Space Telescope uh, to follow them up. So while Webb's primary goal is to understand the origins of our universe by zooming in and looking at the very earliest galaxies and the birth of stars and planets, Euclid's goal is to build that 3D map in order to understand some of the most mysterious components of our universe, dark matter and dark energy. Now, these are estimated to make up 95% of the matter in the universe, and they sound similar, but they're actually completely unrelated. So first up, we know dark matter has to exist because we can observe the effects of its gravity. It causes galaxies to spin faster, even groups of galaxies, and it bends light. But that's really all we know about it for now, because Euclid can observe that bending of light in great detail, and by mapping galaxies, the things we can see, from that we can map where the dark matter has to be. Now, as for dark energy, at the moment, it's really just a name and a concept and a way for us to explain why the universe is expanding faster and faster, because otherwise physicists are going to have to revisit Einstein's general theory of relativity. <laughs> so they're hoping Euclid will give us some clue as to what dark energy, if it exists, might be. So big questions all around, and I, for one, can't wait to see what we learn. Thank you for bringing it to us, Darius. Much appreciated. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Dan.